Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and we got some major news for you Guns N' Roses fans. This was all over the internet. So Guns N' Roses music video for November Rain has officially hit 1 billion views and counting. This makes Guns N' Roses music video for November Rain the most viewed music video from before the 2000s and the most viewed rock song of all time on YouTube. So it reached the feed on Friday night around, I think it was 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, just for comparison, the next closest rock songs include The Zombie by The Cranberries and Smells Like Teen Spirit. So Smells Like Teen Spirit has 730 million views, while Zombie has 740 million views. So the stats on November Rain are pretty mind-blowing. So YouTube talked a bit about some of the stats for November Rain. So according to YouTube reps, it's not surprising that the song's popularity peaks in November. It gets an average of almost 560,000 hits a day, with views in November jumping 41% compared to the rest of the Now, one thing the stats do not talk about or show is how much the song's popularity has gone up since Slash Duff and Axel have reunited with the band dating back to 2016. So speaking of Guns N' Roses and records, uh, Guns N' Roses have four songs on the top rock songs charts from the Billboard, uh, from Billboard magazine. So Guns N' Roses currently have four songs on the Billboard charts. Three of the songs are, of course, are singles from the previously released Appetite for Destruction album, which came out in 1987. They're probably back on the charts because of the reissue that's come out. So Sweet Child of Mine, Paradise City, and Welcome to the Jungle are all on the top rock, rock, top rock songs charts. So Sweet Child of Mine is number 13, while Welcome to the Jungle is number 17, and Paradise City is number 19. Also on the charts is their new single, Shadow of Your Love, which holds steady at number 6 on the mainstream rock charts. So Guns N' Roses have added an yet another tour date to their never-ending in this lifetime tour. So they're going to be playing Mexico in early November. They're going to be headlining the Mother of All Festivals in Monterey, Mexico on Saturday, November 3rd. The tickets will go on sale to the public on July 16th. So in addition to Guns N' Roses video for November Rain hitting 1 billion views on YouTube, there were some more stats revealed about people's watching habits about, regarding Guns N' Roses. So YouTube revealed that 83% of Guns N' Roses video views on YouTube come from outside the United States, which is pretty shocking. So the countries that make up a bulk of that 83% include Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia. Now, if you look at some of Guns N' Roses' other music videos, one of them in particular is coming up on a billion views. So uh, Sweet Child of Mine has almost 700 million views. Uh, Don't Cry has almost 500 million views. Estranged has more than 111 million views. And then a number of their other videos, um, which are maybe less popular, have tens of millions of views. So in other news, uh, this one regards Slash. So when Slash got together with Megan Hodges back in 2015, or late 2014, he had moved to this house, which you guys see here. This is in the Woodland Hills. I remember, I think TMZ posted an article back then saying that this was Slash's new house, and they called it like downgrading from his previous house which was like a 10 million dollar house so slash no longer lives there he bought a new house which we reported a little while back and apparently the new person living in slash's old house is nba player brandon jennings so he plays for the milwaukee bucks and he's been a nuisance to his neighbors uh, the daily news interviewed his neighbor ivan Kuz kuznetsov and his wife who say that jennings hosts large parties and blares music so loudly they sometimes have to sleep in their basement Kuznetsov and his wife talked about having Slash as a neighbor saying that never ever did we hear loud music from him and uh, they also said that Slash you know was was a good neighbor now if you guys remember back in 2015 Slash got a tattoo on his neck that had like GPS coordinates and that matched this address in Woodlands Hills Woodland Hills so we've got some other news uh, I know some of you guys are maybe night train members I'm proudly not a Night Train member, so there's some new membership packages that have been announced by Guns N' Roses Night Train website. So there's still two tiers. There's a $40 US tier and an $80 US tier. They've added some new content. So the $40 Night Train membership now gets you a passport. In addition to exclusive concert uh, access to concert ticket presales, you get exclusive access to Night Train members only community, fan form, and blogs. And then you get exclusive access to members only perks and contests when available. You also get a Night Train patch and this new passport. So the way the passport works is I guess you go to different shows and you can go to certain members of the crew and they will give you a passport stamp. It kind of is a way to show off to your friends like, hey, I've been to this show. Check out my passport stamps. Now, there is an asterisk next to the passports. It says that it's only um, the stamps are only available uh, at certain shows. 
And they also say there's some other etch show benefits, but they haven't really elaborated on what that is. I feel like they're still coming up with that idea. I think it's kind of a tacky and stupid idea, if you ask me. I don't really care about a passport. But I guess nowadays when you play, whenever you do anything, whether it's playing video games, like, you know, you get those trophies if you play on PlayStation 4, or you get the achievements if you play on the Xbox, it's kind of a way to brag and show off to other people. The $80 tier has a new um, hoodie. It's a Night Train hoodie with a sewn-in patch on the front. And you get pretty much the same perks that you get with the $40, except you also get an exclusive Night Train water bottle as well. So I'm not a big fan of the hoodie. I think the, the color is quite ugly, but let me know your guys' thoughts. Will this entice you to get a Night Train membership or renew your Night Train membership? Let me know in the comment section below. Turning now to some Duff news. So if you guys saw our podcast, we were joking a lot about Duff and his punk rock credibility. And it's always fun to, you know, poke some fun at the band. So Duff was acting super punk rock in Moscow. So he was spotted with his wife and uh, they came out of the Christian Dior store. This kind of reminded me of when James Hetfield from Metallica was spotted in that infamous photo where he's holding the Armani collection bag. And then you remember he had to do some interviews and he said, it wasn't my bag. I was holding my wife's bag. So Slash and Megan took in the sights in Moscow ahead of the band's performance on Friday. These were taken I think, from Wednesday or Thursday night when they were visiting Red Square. So Richard Fortas also had some posts from Russia. He took a little jab at President Trump saying that looked all day for an Obama doll but just couldn't find one. I really wish the band would stop doing this shit and just release new music and stop touring. I know I've seen some people say oh, they want Guns N' Roses to tour in North America again. Frankly, I wish they would just stop touring and actually get in the studio and put out some new music. Now, at Guns N' Roses' show on Friday in Moscow, Russia, you guys may have missed it. During Paradise City, one of the fans threw on uh, a Yushanka on stage, so it narrowly missed Duff, and then it landed in front of Axel, who wore it, as you guys can see in this photo, and then uh, Duff was wearing it a little bit later in Paradise City, so I've linked to that down below if you guys want to see the band goofing around. So this next video is pretty mind-blowing. So a South African musician named Daniel Barron uh, performed a medley of Guns N' Roses songs in the middle of traffic in Johannesburg, South Africa. So he did a medley of Sweet Child of Mine, Knocking on Heaven's Door, and November Rain. It's shot beautifully. He's basically at an intersection standing on a median with him and two other musicians. And uh, it's really cool what he did, and he's got a great voice. So I've linked to that down below if you guys want to go check it out. So turning now to some Slash news, we had some rumors earlier in the week that Guns N' Roses, who recently played Poland, would be returning to the country in February of 2019. This left a lot of people, including me, scratching my head saying, why would they be going back to Europe so soon? Well, it turns out the rumor may be partially true. Slash, featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators, are most likely going to be playing Poland next February as part of a European tour. Now, they haven't officially announced anything, but Slash will be on tour in October and November. I think it's safe to say that early next year, he will be touring Europe as well. Now, they interviewed Todd Kearns several months ago where he talked about 2019 being taken up mostly by touring with Slash and the Conspirators. Dizzy Reed, for those of you guys who missed it, he was on the latest episode of Eddie Trunk's podcast. I've put a link to that podcast down below if you guys want to go listen to it. I haven't had the chance to listen to it yet because we interviewed Dizzy Reed back in February. So this next story relates more to Velvet Revolver and Stone Temple Pilots and Guns N' Roses. So Scott Weiland's net worth has been revealed in uh, new court documents that have been uh, circulating online. So according to My News LA, Scott Weiland's estate has been ordered to pay uh, by a judge $4,000 a month uh, to the singer's children, according to the article. So according to the article, his ch children, Noah, who's 17, and Lucy, 15, will each receive allowance until he or she turns 18. They also will no longer receive payments if they die, become legally emancipated, or the estate is terminated. The two children's mother and Scott's first wife, Mary Wyland, filed court documents stating that his estate has a value of about $1.6 million, with an average annual royalty income of $265,000. I was actually kind of surprised by the 265000 given what royalties are in this day and age and hearing bands complain about royalties. I was surprised to see STPs at that high because Guns N' Roses were, I think, half a million dollars back in the day, so they're probably even less now. So it says, in addition to the estate, in addition, the estate has $645,000 debt to the City National Bank and is negotiating the resolution of an unnamed significant financial federal creditor claim for $700,000. So a January 2016 report from Billboard revealed that Scott was dealing with hepatitis to see mental illness and the knowledge that both of his parents had cancer in the final months of his life. The article featured interviews with Scott's widow Jamie, his mother Sharon, and his Wildabouts bandmates Tommy Black and Nick Mayberry, as well as touring manager Aaron Moeller and others. So 
Janice, Jamie said that Scott has been experiencing episodes of paranoia and mania caused by bipolar disorder. And she explained at one point it was so bad I had to move out because he was unstable. Eventually they found medication that leveled him out with Jamie adding for the last couple of years he was doing pretty good. Jamie also opened up in the article about the legal battle with Wylan's ex-wife Mary over his estate saying, I don't know what under what mattress she thinks she's going to find two million because it sure as shit isn't there. He was broke. So that does it for this week's video. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for the latest Guns N' Roses news and history videos. Also, go visit us on gnrcentral.com to stay up to date on the latest Guns N' Roses and related news. Take care.